Chaz McDonald, I am owner of Spinner of Scotland. Um, in this wee video that I'm going to show you today, uh, I'd like to show you an excellent wee piece of Scotland, uh, the South Argyll, uh, Napdale in particular, and some parts of Isla. These places have some relevance for Clan Donald, Scotland's greatest clan, in our opinion that is, um, but also to Campbell's, Macmillan's, McKechans, McKechnies, some Mackay's, some others. Now, I did this trip in February, so you can expect some of our Scottish weather. And in the true spirit of Clan Donald heroism, you're going to see some video of seals. No, that's not the heroic bit. The heroic bit is that I was up to my middle in the sea on a February morning to get these shots. So you can see, I'll do whatever it takes to make your trip successful. Even that. So just ask. Cheers. We're starting in Napdale, about an hour south of Oban. This is a very typical west and northwest Scotland terrain. Long lochs, marinas, steep hills, lots of bog and bracken, stunning views, and all very quiet and picturesque. Large parts of the mainland have views to islands like this across Loch Sween to the Isle of Jura. But it be these hills are known as the Paps of Jura. Towards the bottom of the Napdale Peninsula is Kilmory, where we find the Kilmory Nap Church. It's a preserved ruin, but it houses some brilliant examples of West Highland grave slabs, as well as the Macmillan High Cross. At one time, the Macmillans had these lands from Clan Donald. Having returned from the Lochaber area in the 15th century, this cross was commissioned by Alexander Macmillan, 5th of Knapp. It depicts the crucifixion and a sword on the west side, and a hunting scene on the east. The cross was taken inside for protection from the weather, but it still faces the direction it originally did. The grave slabs show a great level of craft and artistry, and several are thought to be of the Iona school. There's many such grave slabs in this general area of the west coast. Now, getting back to those Macmillans in Clan Donald, this is Castle Sween on the edge of Loch Sween in Napdale. It's a very solid structure, clearly capable of projecting great power. 
It was built by a man called Sweeney, or Sween, and is thought to be one of the earliest standing stone castles in Scotland, dating back as far as the 12th century. Seals are quite common on the west coast, and with care you can usually get within about 100 yards or so. These are common or harbour seals. They bask on any available rocks with access to the water, and generally they lie on their sides for some odd reason. They are the most nosy creatures on earth, but they're also very shy and wary, so any closer or any disturbance, they're likely to get back in the water in a splash. But they do have some of the most beautiful places on earth to swim around in. Two boats operate from here, the Isle of Arran and the Finlagen, and with nine distilleries in Isla, there's nearly always whisky on board. But you can't get onto the vehicle deck during sailings. The Museum of Isla Life is in Port Charlotte, pretty much opposite Beaumont on the shores of Loch Andal. A converted church, it holds many artefacts telling of the social and cultural history of the island. Some of the tools and accoutrements are fascinating, like this horse slipper, which was intended to stop horses making hoof marks on garden lawns.
Across the island, on the southeast side, is Dunnyveig Castle, right on the entrance to Lagavulin Bay. This is one of the most substantial of the Clandonald castles, and was used as a naval base for the clan. The castle overlooks the sea strait between Isla and the mainland, and it was used as a collecting point for levies and sailors who were using the navigable, sheltered inner waters up past Jura and on towards Oban and Loch Linney. Now, here's something you don't see every day, a round church. It's a fascinating building, unique and very engaging. But it's very difficult to find out why it has this unusual shape. Some say it's an attempt to provide no corners for the devil to hide in. However, there's clear references to Italian churches in its positioning and style. It was built by Daniel Campbell, second of Isla, and it sits at the top of the main street in Beaumont, which is a planned village which was started by his father, the first Daniel, first of Isla. The roof is supported by this central pillar, which is wooden, perhaps hemlock oak, and that's further harled and plastered. The gallery was an 1830 addition. The church is of the typically unfussy style common to all Church of Scotland buildings, not austere, but concentrated on the purpose. This huge double sarcophagus was intended for Sir Walter Frederick Campbell and his wife, Lady Eleanor. Port Ellen is named after Lady Eleanor, and she lies in the sarcophagus. However, her husband, who died in Normandy in 1855, isn't with her. Of further interest to Clandonald folks is this memorial to the Reverend Donald Curry Caskey, a Beaumont man. Reverend Caskey was Minister of the Scots Kirk in Paris in 1940, at the time of the German invasion. Caskey remained in Paris and gained great fame as the Tartan Pimpernel, firstly helping stranded British civilians and then British and Allied service personnel to steal back to Britain. The medal you see is the MBE he got for his service. Finlagen. It's known as the Cradle of Clandonald. It was this hollow in the earth and on the islands in the loch that the Clandonald Lordship of the Isles was based and functioned up and down large tracts of the west coast of Scotland. The Finlagen site consists of three main elements. The interpretive centre on a croch on the side of the loch, Eilin Moor, the Great Island, 
where there was a stronghold on community. And Aelin of Corla, the Council Island, where all the great matters of the Lordship were discussed and decisions made before they were sent back out to the lands of the Lordship to the chieftains, the Greaves and the taxmen who administered them. In the chapel, which is dedicated to St Findlugan, are grave markers for the West Highland slab type. These are for the wives and children of the Lords, but the Lords themselves are buried on Iona, a religious community which they supported and nurtured. Aelin Coral is but a few yards from Aelin Moor and would have been accessed by a sunken causeway. In fact, it's a cranach, a mostly artificially created island, probably an accumulation of various buildings which have crumbled over many ages. At some point it had a castle on it with one or two smaller buildings. The loch in the islands are visible from the visitor centre, which sits just behind Croc Shanta, itself thought to have further interesting archaeological finds yet to give up. This wonderful desk at the main entrance is styled upon a highland galley, a Nurvik or a Berlin, and these were famed as the tool of power projection which so helped the Islesmen to exert such authority up and down the western seaboard of Scotland. The visitor centre is a beautifully constructed extension to an existing cottage where there's plenty of displays and history to be found. We're down in the southeast of the island again at Kiltalton Church, or Kiladalton, cell of the adopted one. It's a ruin, likely dedicated to St John the Evangelist, tucked away near our beg, not far from Lagavulin. In the churchyard is an 800 year old cross, which is thought to be Europe's oldest complete stone cross, still standing in its original position. Some consider it to be one of the finest of its type, and it's closely related to St Martin's and St Oren's on Iona. Some of the cross's decoration is very similar to a plate in the Book of Kells, which is thought to have been at least partly written on Iona. The church is roofless now, but when it was in use it was likely thatched. It's a fairly big building for its time, having been built around the turn of the 13th century. Talking of things spiritual, let's have a look at one or two of the distilleries. Isle is famous for its fine nine, and there's a tenth being built now. It's difficult, if not impossible, to say which is the most popular, 
But surely Bree Chladich, or the laddie as it's called, is one of the most hip. Bree Chladich sits almost opposite Beaumont and very close to Port Charlotte on the west side of Loch and Dole. Curlila is on the northeast of the island, not far from Port Askig. And from here, there's some brilliant views of the Paps of Jura, just across the Narrows. And with a bit of camera trickery, you can make the very far away mull look really quite close. Lagavulin is one of the southeastern distilleries, situated on the shore of Lagavulin Bay where Dunavig Castle stands. And then there is Bunahavan, which is my favourite of Ely. So I took a bit of time to look around the grounds and get a sense of the place. Well, that's most of the time I had on the island. I'll be back in September when the West Highlands give some of their most accommodating weather. I hope you've enjoyed the trip as much as I have. Maybe you'll even want to come and meet these locals too. Thank mm -hmm. you.